Уважаемые участники третьего московского урбанистического форума, сессия на тему «Координация движения. Мировые стандарты планирования транспортной инфраструктуры для Москвы» начнется в зале А прямо сейчас. Dear participants of the third Moscow Urban Forum, the session Coordinated Motion, Global Standards of Transport Infrastructure Planning from Moscow is starting shortly in Hall A. Thank you. И мы с радостью приглашаем на сцену модератора сессии Дарью Борисову. We are pleased to invite to the stage the moderator of the session, Дарья Борисова. Добрый день! Приветствую всех на э, сессии по э, планированию транспортной инфраструктуры и разрешите пригласить... Э, на... Mr. Lexutov, uh, Deputy Mayor of Moscow on Transport and Development of uh, uh, Surface uh, uh, Transportation and Roads. Uh, Karima Nigmatulina, and uh, so then uh, the Family uh, of Moscow. Enrique uh, Inlosa, so Head of uh, the Institute of Transportation Development. Don Kasanke, General Director of Gura State and General Director of Zao Mashtab. And uh, Jonathan Watzel, so Head of the Practices of Urban Development, uh, which is uh, Senior Partner of Mackenzie Shanghai. Uh, so good uh, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone at the session and today we're going to discuss uh, 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 transportation availability accessibility and uh, uh, connection uh, between uh, uh, mega cities. Um, uh, so remembering about uh, 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 Moscow transportation hub which one of the largest uh, in the world and we know that depending on the quality of uh, a city environment uh, and transportation uh, availability and accessibility so development of public transportation pedestrian traffic and other components uh, uh, so then this city immediately becomes more profitable and uh, so the difference may be in income and profitability two three times uh, even more so then and it should be uh, it could be efficiently distributed between the citizens between the state between the businesses and between all the stakeholders and uh, properly distributed evenly everyone partakes and uh, so I would like just to build this discussion just trying just to put together different opinions different views and uh, so the representatives of state authorities will be speaking just from different departments and the divisions uh, from the public transportation department from the master plan of the reconstruction of Moscow and uh, so then the representatives of business uh, will have a say and uh, the international experience experts. So the discussion will be organized in a way that will serve and will listen to the presentations and then there will be time allowed to exchange opinions. So I'd like just to invite Maxim Stanislavich Leksutov, a deputy mayor, on the issues related to the development of infrastructure, transport infrastructure. infrastructure. So he will come out with the plan of development uh, of the new Moscow from the viewpoint of uh, uh, transportation accessibility. Mm. So I'd like just to touch upon to say a few words about the current uh, uh, situation in the city at large. And so what we have in public transport and transportation throughput of the infrastructure. I will touch upon uh, in greater detail about the main initiatives. Uh, and so why we do that, what's the rationale and what uh, uh, outcomes we expect. And uh, uh, so these are the two parts. Uh, so my presentation. So. Uh, so first part will be the key all this has to do with Moscow and the second is the new Moscow and uh, let uh, I will be uh, fast so that all my colleagues could have time to speak as well next slide mm -hmm. okay I flip it okay uh, so let's see what we have here uh, so this slide shows uh, the uh, the load uh, when they move from Moscow region to Moscow yes I mean traf traffic uh, some from periphery to the downtown uh, from uh, uh, 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning. 
So this is the data from the last year, information last year. And you can see this, comparing this. So I heard about some research that say that in downtown there aren't many, uh, there's not much traffic. But this is not right because because 45 percent of jobs are located downtown Moscow. And this is a de facto figure. And uh, so and then not, uh, uh, certainly not uh, all uh, citizens uh, uh, so move around the downtown uh, during rush hours. And, uh, and uh, so there are some pensioners as well. Uh, and some people live and work uh, closely. Uh, but uh, it's not all. And uh, so then a transportation hub. And uh, so there are some uh, 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 so areas uh, in Moscow where the transportation is pretty well appointed. And there are some areas uh, that are overloaded, and this is obvious. And you can see on the slide, uh, so then it's color coded, and uh, so the overload of certain um, uh, so areas, uh, administrative districts, and so they're numbered. And I don't want to comment upon them, but they're self explanatory. But uh, so then more than half of the uh, car drivers in Moscow, uh, uh, so it takes more than an hour for them to get to work. Uh, so I mean, more than half. This is an average time uh, uh, of travel from home to, yes, it's average, is, is, uh, is an, I'm not talking about Moscow region. And uh, so the situation is quite uh, uh, critical. It's uh, uh, from the viewpoint of transport uh, infrastructure. Uh, then uh, here you can see the uh, transportation load when they move from uh, the periphery to downtown. So uh, public transportation, uh, public transportation, the personal transportation overload uh, of our road system uh, is uh, uh, exceeds 42 percent during rush hours. Uh, overload 42 percent, and so you said that the work, uh, the business uh, business days from 8 uh, to 8 uh, p.m. and uh, uh, from 8 to 9 is the most highly uh, uh, loaded. So public transportation is uh, overloaded 22%. Uh, so, uh, so because the standard, uh, so the 4.5 uh, uh, square meters per person, so that's a kind of indicator of comfortable travel. Uh, so 4 square meters, that's uh, 4.5. Uh, so 4.5 people per square meter. Yeah, so that's kind of comfortable. And uh, so the least, uh, uh, so the least overload is in the metro. Uh, uh, so that's 22 percent, and uh, uh, and uh, 32 percent overload uh, is uh, observed in the Moscow region. And so then you can see this in other slides over the top uh, of the table. Uh, so this is the uh, Moscow over Moscow metro overload. Uh, so we are taking the second place after the Tokyo metro overload. So we're in the top two uh, as far as the uh, uh, passenger traffic in, in the Moscow metro is. Uh, uh, and then uh, what are the conclusions uh, that we'd like to, uh, uh, to, 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 to make and what are the goals? So for, uh, let me talk about the goals, objectives. Uh, so we want uh, uh, an average travel of passengers of public transformation and car drivers should not be more than 50 minutes uh, for both. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, so uh, comfortable public transportation, that's another task. Uh, safe and comfortable uh, 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 so cycling uh, possibilities and uh, food traffic uh, uh, possibilities. We, and then another point very important is the development of uh, uh, taxes taxes because we need more more taxes that's a very important factor that need to be factored in uh, uh, to address the issue of uh, uh, city congestion uh, uh, then uh, our main uh, uh, regulatory uh, uh, documents uh, as part of the investment program in moscow uh, uh, so our program is, uh, uh, has been already uh, uh, approved until 2016. Uh, so the main idea is to develop the transport infrastructure. Lots of money uh, has been allocated uh, uh, for the improvement of the public and private transportation system. And they were all approved. And the priority in the budget of the city certainly uh, goes there. Metro development and then development of the uh, uh, roads in Moscow. Uh, then connection uh, between the roads uh, and uh, certainly that because the connection certainly leads to the uh, uh, to the less uh, uh, load and uh, and because now they're from A to B uh, you can get the shortcut uh, then uh, the government of Moscow decided jointly with Moscow uh, that Russian railways uh, companies as they made a decision to co-finance uh, 
uh, uh, this uh, road infrastructure because because the the importance uh, about the, uh, the about the, about the uh, commuter trains commuter trains acquire special importance because commuter trains especially when there is a swinging movement of the people coming to Moscow to work and then going back and these the commuter trains pay, pay great deal of attention so we need to connect metro with the uh, with the commuter system and then uh, building uh, uh, exchange hubs uh, so what's a transportation exchange hub what is it uh, uh, so, so that, let me give you an idea of what we know we what we think it is this is the improved transportation infrastructure which is uh, which is aimed at improving uh, uh, comfort uh, comforts of passengers just to change from one means of transportation to another means of transportation quickly just to buy a ticket uh, and uh, so order to buy another one and uh, so then to for example dump your bike and just to uh, and to take uh, to take the metro for example uh, or just to park your car and uh, and get on the public transportation and th that's what we call the uh, uh, transportation exchange hub that's that's our definition of it uh, this is transportation exchange hub so there should be certainly some uh, commercial uh, property infrastructure uh, shops uh, and other but this, uh, but this is sort of exchange hub. Uh, it's, certain, it's not commercial. Commercial is secondary. So it's kind of concomitant factor, uh, because the most important is just to uh, ensure that uh, that the person can get from one transportation to another transportation I mean, quickly. Uh, then the next uh, mm, uh, development of uh, uh, of passenger space. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, foot traffic space and uh, uh, cycling space. Uh, so next uh, next year, so we'll have about 5,000 uh, bicycles. So we'll have 300 uh, stations that will be leasing bicycles. Bicycles uh, plus uh, the uh, cycle paths, and uh, will be built. Uh, and they will be offering to those who like to cycle. Then parking. This is a very another uh, another very important point. So that allows to regulate. Uh, uh, so the number of cars coming into the, the cities and uh, it, it works uh, uh, and uh, uh, because we do have some parking uh, uh, spaces but not not certainly not just, uh, uh, but only just in Ju June uh, this year we started this project it's a very young project just so inside the garden ring uh, area the boulevard ring area so when we organize the parkings there streamline them eventually and uh, so we're looking for ways how to uh, so to organize to administer this uh, this this parking space uh, for cars uh, uh, properly then the intellectual transportation system which is the uh, uh, safety uh, first and foremost uh, and uh, and then certainly to use the throughput of uh, the roads uh, uh, to the best of their advantage and uh, increasing the throughputs of our roads and uh, uh, so then, uh, so then, each each uh, the traffic light uh, should have its own data transmit uh, transmitting system, uh, gauges, uh, uh, metering devices, uh, uh, intellectual uh, uh, traffic lights, and uh, I think that next year we'll be able to properly uh, uh, tune this system and uh, uh, of transport of of, uh, uh, of uh, traffic lights, uh, so that we could uh, uh, streamline the operation and then improve uh, the throughput. Uh, and uh, to, to, to make sure that and certainly and, and certainly that the priority of the transportation should be given to the public transportation and uh, so the traffic system and everything so the traffic management system should be uh, should take care should make sure that the public transportation is given the top priority to and uh, so then uh, now is the traffic police that is doing that uh, uh, so but uh, they enforcing this decision but uh, we'll try certainly, certainly to move uh, uh, to uh, this decision-making uh, 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 pr process uh, should not be done so much by the traffic police, but by the government of Moscow. Then the cargo uh, uh, transport, you know about the limitations on uh, the circular highway. Uh, so I, I'm sure that elevated, she mitigated the situation. Uh, because uh, otherwise, uh, so the circular highway uh, would be blocked uh, right now, would stop moving. And uh, then in spite of the reconstruction and so that some early some lanes uh, have become narrower but still uh, the uh, the uh, circular highway is moving uh, and uh, we uh, have uh, analyzed uh, uh, and uh, so then uh, a big 12 ton uh, truck uh, 12 ton truck uh, 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 it uh, it is it is low the 25 percent the utilization so these huge huge trucks uh, so they they carry only one fourth of the load and uh, there is no there is no it's no 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 problem just to exchange them for uh, for smaller trucks 
and there is no need. And uh, th th that's why it's, uh, there's no problem, because the big 12-ton trucks are not allowed into Moscow from 6 to 10. And, uh, and uh, we are sure that our position is right and uh, that uh, we will be urging so the companies to make the trucks smaller and that make them more nimble. Then uh, the, the system of navigation, uh, that's a very important component uh, in this system, but our program uh, provides for the uh, for the presence uh, of private investments uh, so not everything should be done from the budget uh, so because practically impossible we we can't do that and uh, and uh, we are very happy to welcome the investors who are ready to come and share with us and then and, and uh, give us a warm shoulder and uh, if those who are ready to invest in the transportation infrastructure and we hope that the uh, the uh, the volume of investments uh, uh, will exceed 800 um, billion uh, um, uh, rubles um, so this is until 2020 the figure so the money will first uh, uh, will be uh, will be used to build uh, uh, hubs and uh, so then underground parking so if you want to build under underground parking we'll support you in every possible way uh, we are interested and uh, so then if you want to help us organize the uh, uh, the administration of the surface uh, uh, transport uh, so we are uh, we want long term uh, strategic and we want our investors to be strategically we want long term relationship and uh, and we're all uh, open for everyone without any exception uh, if you want to participate then the next slide our expectations and our, all our expectations of our projects transport uh, projects what uh, 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 will it amount to and uh, so then 75% uh, is in green, meaning that uh, that all the problems related to a movement uh, during rush hours in the evening, in the morning, so should have been addressed uh, 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 shortly. Uh, and then on the right hand side, so you can see uh, uh, some other areas uh, where the problem, uh, this will be until 2020. Uh, and uh, so then there will be some areas where the, uh, the, the rush hour challenges will not be addressed. Uh, and uh, but will and uh, so that's why we need by 2020 find the uh, required solutions uh, to to uh, to uh, unload uh, the, uh, uh, the Moscow uh, from excessive traffic uh, and uh, our plans by 2020 we want I hope that will achieve the results so, so the uh, the city has accumulated a lot of information related to movement to traffic to uh, density load uh, uh, so then the peak traffics uh, during the day and night and uh, we know exactly where how many cars are and uh, now we have set a diagnosis and now just we need to select the right treatment and we know exactly what's happening in our cities, uh, which are the most challenging uh, spots uh, on the Moscow map. On 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 the Moscow map, and uh, which and that and depending on the priorities, will take things as they come. And we fully realize what needs to be done tomorrow uh, uh, and uh, for the next several years. Hmm. And uh, what uh, what is what is the new Moscow? On this slide, you can see some parameters. The new Moscow. This is the blue. Uh, 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 contour. Uh, so the area of the new Moscow uh, is uh, is bigger than the territory of the historic uh, 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 Moscow, uh, but the population is only two hundred thousand people. Uh, two hundred because the uh, uh, because the territory before the first of July last year. Uh, so the population uh, of uh, of the old Moscow was eleven point six million. Uh, as as opposed to 200,000. That's why certainly this new territory requires a lot of attention. And remembering uh, so the experience will need to avoid mistakes that we made before. And uh, so that the concept of development would be built along clear lines. Clearly, so there should be balance between uh, so residential and, uh, uh, and jobs. That the transportation should go at an accelerated rate. I mean the development and uh, and uh, so then the state planning committee uh, uh, helping us. I hope that we'll be able to obviate the mistakes uh, that we made uh, several decades ago and will not uh, uh, they will not happen again. Then the passenger flows, passenger flows. So the number of trips they will increase twice by 2020 and. Uh, uh, so then today's throughput of the infrastructure is exhausted. And uh, so I can see it's all red. Uh, so everyone who uh, who made the trip uh, or lives on the new Moscow territory knows the problem. And uh, so, the, uh, uh, so then 75 min mi minutes uh, at least to get to the old Moscow. And uh, so that requires a lot of uh, uh, 
uh, uh, effort to, uh, to, to, to change the situation. So what are we planning to do? Uh, so today, uh, de facto, 70% uh, of the population uh, uh, so use uh, public transportation daily. Uh, so then the, the main migration area is the, uh, is the western and the central uh, districts. Uh, you can see the main highways and the, the main railways and uh, you can see them and uh, so we uh, there is a chance to increase the throughput and uh, so two uh, uh, so then the, the commuter trains uh, Kiev uh, uh, train uh, railway and the Kalusk uh, uh, railway so to increase the throughput several times is possible uh, uh, then uh, we are we have developed I'm sorry that I'm, I'm just scra scratching the surface because I have to go fast and so we developed a set of measures that would allow to address the issue uh, uh, short term. Uh, some of them we have already done. Uh, uh, we uh, created uh, uh, jointly with our colleagues from Moscow. So 55 very important uh, uh, events that admit of no delay. Uh, and uh, uh, so then nine, uh, nine new uh, uh, surface uh, 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 new surface roads uh, have been identified and then we got uh, some parkings uh, uh, so which is uh, drive drive and ride uh, uh, so, some uh, big uh, parking lots uh, we set up uh, and then five new routes uh, how to get from the old moscow to the new uh, from the new moscow to the old moscow to minimize the time uh, it takes uh, to get to uh, uh, to the downtown area of uh, of moscow 13 parking lots uh, for 2700 cars and uh, 1100 free uh, uh, for those uh, who use public transportation. And, uh, and jointly with the railroad guys, we uh, uh, increased the throughput by 15% uh, of uh, uh, Kiev's uh, train uh, uh, station. And uh, so we increased the number of commuters and we increased the length of the train, number of cars. And, uh, and then increased, even expanded the length of the platforms. Uh, and all this we we uh, we made it in, in six months. Uh, it was very tough work, very difficult, and uh, so uh, then uh, so we alleviated the problem somewhat uh, and uh, uh, mitigated, uh, addressed it to some extent. Then the uh, next slides you can see uh, our main programs uh, that uh, we plan to implement. Uh, so the top priority goes to the development of public transportation. Uh, uh, so then this, this is a list of events and the deadlines uh, when uh, these uh, uh, event, uh, events will be implemented. The most important one is the uh, development of the commuters. Uh, uh, and uh, so then the extension of uh, uh, Sokolniki and Butovska metro lines uh, into the country. And then, uh, then the reconstruction of uh, some other uh, secondary roads and other things. Uh, uh, so that uh, uh, building uh, bridges over the rail uh, ways is very important uh, uh, because they need to uh, be built. Uh, uh, because without building uh, the uh, the bridges over the rail roads, uh, it, uh, so then the throughput will never uh, uh, increase because of the commuter trains are very uh, frequent. Uh, then next slide. Uh, so we have measures to increase uh, the uh, the comforts of passengers um, uh, because the uh, people so we need to deserve uh, uh, the, the the trust uh, displayed by Moscow as to public transportation and uh, so we need just to ensure that uh, uh, it should be predictable the interval should be predictable the transport surface transport should be uh, available uh, comfortable and uh, so we're going just to put special uh, so signs on the lamp post which we would will show real time uh, so the intervals of the train so then uh, yes, uh, so we developed uh, software uh, uh, so which you can download it and you can always see the, the intervals and the time and the time uh, so we're testing it uh, in uh, Moscow government as the service is almost ready so again just to by the year end and uh, we'll we'll launch it and uh, anyone uh, testing a pilot uh, uh, will work and anyone can download it uh, then we need to change the public transportation uh, uh, pattern of operation so when it should start when it should finish at the end of the day and uh, we need to uh, in increase uh, uh, so to, uh, to, to to make sure the distance between between the the home of a person just to the nearest uh, bus stop uh, to decrease at the time and uh, certainly better lighting better lighting uh, because one of the one of the main challenges which we have identified with our colleagues when we did the research at, at night time when, when it's dark lighting is important so we we'll buy buses of new generation buses and uh, we uh, they are uh, 
and uh, so now we are working on the task order that would uh, even increase uh, requirements uh, to the uh, to the buses. Uh, so, for example, so the system AC should work, uh, heating should work, additional safety uh, uh, for the passengers and other other features. Uh, yeah, so the system of uh, so then the skidding uh, prevention mechanisms, uh, all this all this stuff needs to be installed. So buying this the best buses, and uh, so we're not going just to buy only from Russian manufacturers, but we will be happy to buy international uh, so bus manufacturers if if they localize especially it would be important, and then uh, then the implementation of these uh, measures. Uh, uh, so this is the tax uh, uh, it, at the time it takes to get downtown uh, in bigger in, in the bigger cities uh, of the world uh, so like London, uh, Beijing, uh, Munich, etc. So who would like us to go down to go down? Uh, so to make sure that uh, so the, the the drive uh, or the ride uh, from uh, from uh, uh, so from the new Moscow to the old Moscow should be in the yellow strip, and uh, uh, and so to. Uh, so that we could create this uh, comfortable, accessible environment, and the transport availability should not uh, 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 so uh, be detrimental to the quality of life, and uh, mm, mm, uh, so and the quality of life. Mm -hmm. So I tried to, to 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 make it within my time slot. I'm sorry that I didn't really uh, reply in detail, but I hope we shall have time to to talk uh, offline and. Uh, uh, elucidate uh, whatever detail you wish to know. Thank you very much, much Maxim, about your story about the priorities uh, in uh, all the ways to develop the transportation system and uh, the quick wins uh, that uh, you are going to achieve uh, very soon. I would like to pass the floor to Karina Nigmatulina to uh, tell us about the strategic, more strategic view uh, on uh, the relation of this city development and uh, transport planning for the whole uh, transportation Moscow node. So before I start, I wanted to say a few key things that I wanted to highlight today. Certainly speaking about the transport, we can discuss transport on different scale uh, within the uh, city fabric, penetration, uh, accessibility, availability. The, the very important factors, I'm sure they will be uh, discussed at other sessions. But today, in my presentation, I wanted to focus on strategic uh, uh, issues on the structure of the transportation backbone of Moscow and the global uh, scale of transport development. Uh, so before moving on to the content, there's another thing to say, discussing the transport uh, from the point of view as uh, the backbone. Uh, well, it has two missions. We need to develop, Moscow needs to develop transport to address our uh, immediate needs. And uh, as we saw at the presentation, that we have traffic jams, very heavy traffic, and we need to make decisions and do something to uh, 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 relieve us of this pain. And uh, uh, transport is something that gives an impetus to the development. And we should not forget about this factor, because it's the transport that increases efficiency, uh, economic uh, returns of the uh, environment, and the raising the potential with proper long-term planning. Before uh, discussing the present issues, let's uh, uh, talk about the background of Moscow. That's the way Moscow was growing um, from the uh, 12th century. Over the last 100 years, Moscow grew up so much. In the 1935, uh, it was uh, uh, quite compact, but in 2012, it uh, increased several times. And uh, let us uh, consider the uh, uh, events in the city and the transportation structure. Back in 1935, we saw uh, the radial highways that were not part of the city structure. But uh, uh, in the last century, we got them going down to the very center of the city. And uh, in Moscow, cars, uh, uh, well, the cars penetration in uh, 1960, we had approximately 60 car per thousand, while in New York, uh, New Yorkers had approximately three to 400 cars per thousand. So we had uh, a very low 
automobile penetration in the last century. So the city uh, planning did not consider uh, such a burgeoning of cars, automobiles, and we were planning those uh, sleeping water, sleeping districts, overnight districts, residential. Uh, so the, 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 the people were supposed to walk uh, from their residence to from their blocks to the school or, uh, or working place. But the um, actually the uh, city construction was catering rather for pedestrians than uh, uh, public transport. And there is another thing that we uh, very rarely discuss because we concentrate on cars, but ro rail uh, roads that uh, enabled development a hundred years ago is uh, uh, the penetration of railways. So from 1897 to uh, 1917, uh, during those 20 years, the main Moscow rail tracks were built and uh, uh, facilitated industrialization of Moscow later. And uh, looking at this uh, Moscow uh, circular uh, railway track, we see it as an impetus for development. Uh, the zones will stop being industrial zones and will uh, become comfortable city fabric. Uh, and uh, discussing the transport, uh, why it is important to remember the fact that transport matters. As uh, we said, uh, Moscow has colossal potential economically. Uh, and uh, uh, territory-wise, uh, because Moscow has a very unsaturated, uh, unsatisfied demand. People want to increase their residential space. People don't have enough uh, uh, residential space. They want to buy new apartments, bigger apartments. Looking at the office space, class A offices are very um, restricted. There is dearth of offices. and. Uh, uh, so we need to build uh, things like that to develop Moscow. Uh, but we understand that without transportation infrastructure, all, only developing the real estate, uh, we shall create huge disbalance. So transportation is vital to dovetail with all other facilities. So uh, at the same time, we should not fail to mention that all roads in this country lead to Moscow. And this gravitation of transportation infrastructure to Moscow, is this the, the density of roads in Moscow is very high. And this Moscow transportation node uh, condition and status uh, Im impacts all Russia because the flows are very dense, very high. Uh, on one hand, uh, this is an advantage, but uh, on the other hand, this is deficiency because it needs a proper management for passengers and cargoes. Uh, it will only in this case it will increase the potential of Moscow region. But if the management is poor, then uh, this uh, inadequate uh, management uh, may have very uh, bad consequences for the whole country. So the Moscow transportation node is a, a, a very important spot for the hub for the development of the country. Let us uh, see uh, what's the current situation. The Moscow region is oversaturated, overheated. It's exactly in Moscow, not just Moscow, but the Moscow region around Moscow. When we were developing the program, we considered the whole issue, not Moscow alone. and. Uh, we have similar charts that is showing the overheating of rails uh, and uh, requires uh, development, further development of rail transportation. And uh, we should also pay attention to the uh, car penetration chart, car density. It is still growing. It is still snowballing. and. Uh, um, it is very difficult to abandon your car, uh, and uh, even buying a car, uh, people should consider uh, traveling by public transport. The idea is not not to buy a car, but the idea is to make the public transport comfortable, even if a family has a car or two. Uh, so to address such uh, uh, 
issues. Our institute developed the new version of the Moscow Transportation Node uh, back in 2011 and uh, uh, upgraded it last year, including the new uh, territories uh, structuring uh, for all industries, including Moscow and Moscow Oblast, that is Moscow region, region around Moscow, and uh, all transportation modes. Uh, so the main target is to ensure comf comfortable travel for passengers. But uh, we should not forget about the cargoes, because uh, they uh, uh, support our city. They feed and uh, ensure procurement for the city. Though priority is would be given to the passengers. And this program uh, has uh, the key components. First, connection of all parts of the territory and uh, the number of uh, viaducts and bridges uh, is going to, that are going to get financed <clears throat> and then we see that the program does exist it's going to be uh, approved very soon and uh, it would be good to see what has already been done since the first release in 2011 was approved uh, you know, the next two years changed the face of the city so much that we have to upgrade this program. Uh, like metro, new metro stations, almost 13 new kilometers and six stations. You know, this pace is uh, so scalable and comparable to the top growing cities in the world. And uh, the metro development program is probably the most important uh, for the uh, urban area and for the passengers. And uh, the Moscow transportation program of the Moscow government is building over 150 kilometers of new metro lines, over 70 new stations. So this scale. Uh, will give us reassurance that the situation will improve. And uh, we see new lines to new territories uh, that uh, will help us develop the, the new belt, because the new added territories depend a lot on the uh, uh, transportation backbone availability. As you see, we have already uh, uh, added it, and uh, we should not forget that every day we, from the Moscow surroundings to Moscow, over uh, one million three hundred people travel to Moscow like a pendulum, morning and uh, night, you know, uh, uh, trips, uh, day trips. How can we help them? Railways commuter trains uh, is something that is very important for sustainable development. And for Moscow, rail tracks, commuter trains, passenger trains, comfortable, uh, swift, quick is the key. Uh, they will help us to cater for those 1,300,000 people who travel to Moscow and back every day. Uh, but uh, to dovetail all the transportation wants, so we need to develop the hubs that Maxim mentioned. Uh, additional factor is that uh, it's both the nodes, the hubs that uh, allow us and uh, uh, exchange nodes and the impetus that uh, allows us to develop the grounds around the hubs. Uh, because uh, it's the transportation availability that helps develop the uh, adjacent areas. Without transportation nodes, it's impossible. And uh, look at the map uh, and appreciate the scale of potential that we have with those hubs and nodes. <coughs> and uh, uh, we discuss streets, highways, and uh, uh, avenues. It is very important uh, to uh, 
to develop the radial lines and uh, the uh, circular highways because we don't have enough of them. And then uh, uh, viaducts and uh, um, uh, other facilities will help us to connect the radial lines. And uh, our institute has always been modeling the transportation loads and flows and uh, uh, estimate the efficiency of uh, specific measures for the city and the factors that we have to take into account. Uh, in our math so that the people will uh, uh, spend less time traveling. This is saving their time. Then uh, again, shorter distances to travel when people do not have to travel north and then south and east to, to reach two points that are two kilometers away. Then the better environment uh, of the city because we understand when the car is uh, in the traffic jam is much worse for the air than compared when the, when the car drives at a speed of whatever, uh, the, the cruise speed. And safety and security, that should not uh, be um, uh, forgotten and we should actually uh, set our priorities and the measures within those priorities in line with them discussing the new moscow which is extremely uh, an extremely hot topic we are developing the uh, aerial the the the, the uh, we are now planning the development of those areas and in my brief presentation just to scratch the surface i can tell you that we should not only develop the radial lines but those uh, parallel to the circular highways uh, uh, beyond uh, the MCAD, the circular highway we have all those Solnsova, butova vidna uh, highways and avenues, we have those uh, cross links. We need those uh, mm, uh, uh, circular highways and uh, on further belts and in new Moscow, we consider uh, probably attaching rail tracks to connect Kievskaya and Kurskaya highways. So one of the questions that we were asking, uh, if we build an additional uh, rail line between uh, those two uh, radial highways, but we understand we cannot uh, uh, extend this corridor to the downtown. We understand that the city fabric should not be penetrated in such a rough way. We need to uh, develop those uh, links, cross links that will uh, connect the people to the radial lines and then the people will take this uh, radial uh, lines to move to the downtown. So <clears throat> uh, this is probably not the most capturing capturing slide, but, but, uh, uh, but uh, you know, we need to park our cars somewhere and uh, this parking space uh, is another important topic that we need to consider developing our plans. I, I doubt I can tell you about everything that I want to, but uh, but I'm ready to take your questions, uh, considering that the general plan of Moscow is now under development and all those topics should be included. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Karina, for such a comprehensive and uh, um, uh, optimistic story about the development of the Moscow transportation. And uh, let me pass the floor to Enrique Benilosa to share his uh, view uh, of uh, a person, kind of third uh, party view on the sustainable development of transport in Moscow. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to uh, go very quickly over some slides because I have a very short time. <laughs> Mobility is a very peculiar problem. Different from health or education, it can get much worse as societies get richer. Mobility solutions are also different because more than a question of money or technology, they are a matter of equity and political decisions. Of course, it is amazing and fantastic the amount of investment that Moscow is doing in rail solutions, and they are wonderful. But even such fantastic and enormous investments will not be enough. 
Every city has tens of thousands of kilometers of lane roads. But do we assume that such network cannot be used for mass transport solutions, as it has been assigned exclusively for a small minority of the population that uses cars? So I would propose that we, did, we need to use such a network for public transport. I would say that the main issue related to transport is how should we distribute the most valuable resource that a city has. Moscow could find oil or diamonds on the ground and still it would miss, not be so valuable as road space. How do we distribute road space between pedestrians, bicyclists, public transport and cars? Like, I would propose to you that this is not a technical issue. If there was more space for cars in London or in Paris, there would be more cars. If there was less space for cars, there would be less cars. So what we are deciding is how many cars do we want in our city. Here in London, you see this picture, for example, you have more space for pedestrians than for cars. This is not because the mayor of London got permission from some transport engineer. This is a political decision. Sidewalks, of course, are part of transport systems, and I would say the most important part of infrastructure of a democratic city, and this is an issue in many developing cities. I would say that the most important difference between an advanced and backward city in terms of infrastructure is not highways or subways, but rather quality sidewalks. And we have many things to solve in Moscow, this is politically difficult, but clearly this is necessary. Great sidewalks, like such as this in Vancouver, or in Berlin, or in London, or in Paris, are crucial for good transport, public transport system, because people would like to walk much longer and would like to take public transport if it is fun and pleasant to walk. Now, for the last 40 years, traffic has been getting worse Commuting times have been getting longer in every American city, and all Canadian cities except for Vancouver too. Clearly, what creates traffic is not the number of cars, but the number of trips and the length of trips. 10 cars doing 10 kilometers each generate the same traffic as one car doing 10 kilometers. So this is why you can do all the highways you want you can do all the roads you want, and you will never solve traffic jams making bigger roads. This is, of course, very clear, and I'm not saying Moscow should not make more roads, but you should have clear that this will not solve traffic jams. You have big roads with completely jammed in all cities. Urban highways destroy a city's human qualities, and they lower property values. And clearly, they do not solve traffic jams, like we see here in Shanghai or here in Mexico. Despite severe damage they do to cities, most urban highways do not even allow public transport buses in them, which is not a very democratic way of using this space. These uh, roads completely jammed in Moscow, or this one completely jammed, and no public transport buses in them. Would it be, besides, if, if highways destroy quality of life and value so much, why not make something different? In the past intervention, I proposed we make urban roads. This means boulevards, avenues. This is a big road. This is Chancellor in Paris. It has 10 lanes, 10 car lanes. But it is one of the most attractive pedestrian spaces in the world. It has, what is the difference between a highway and an avenue? It has traffic lights, it has big sidewalks, it has trees, it has shops. So a big challenge would be to turn Moscow highways into avenues, into boulevards. It would be much better for the cities. Boulevards or avenues increase values, and they still move a lot of cars. And since all highways are going to be jammed anyway, an avenue moves the same amount of cars as a highway. But let's go quickly. Mobility, I would say something that is even more painful. 
Highways do not solve traffic jams. Big roads do not solve traffic. But subways do not solve traffic either. London has some of the best railroad network infrastructure in the world. And still, they had so much traffic, they had to charge for cars going into the city. Mobility and traffic jams are two different problems and have two different solutions. Mobility is solved by public transport, such as trains or subways. But trains or subways or buses will solve mobility, but they will not solve traffic jams. Like you see here in Bangkok, the subway right above and the traffic jam below. You can have a subway under every street and you will not solve traffic jams. You will solve mobility, which is the important thing, by the way. We need to solve mobility. I am not so sure that solving traffic jams is a priority, except for trucks. How do we solve traffic? The only way to solve traffic is restricting car use. And the simplest way to restrict car use is restrictions to parking. We should remember that parking is not a constitutional right. If, we, if people tell the mayor, where should we park, the mayor can tell them, well, it's the same as if you ask me where you should put your clothes or your food. This is not my problem. It's like if they were to buy a refrigerator and they would ask the mayor, mayor, I bought a refrigerator, now give me a house. So this is not a government obligation. But we must know that more parking gets more traffic. Eliminating curbside parking in order to make more space or widened sidewalks would make a, almost any city better. To get rid of parking and make bigger sidewalks almost would improve any city. For several decades, as it has been mentioned, new buildings in central London have not been allowed to have parking beyond a few. For example, the, le the building, in these two buildings, the one on the right has only about 10 parking spaces, and the one on the left, even though it has nearly 10,000 people working there, it only has 45 parking spaces, basically for the handicapped. So in central London, for the last 40 years, office buildings have not been allowed to have parking. Now, public transport, I would say that sometimes inequality is before our noses, and we do not see it. Less than 100 years ago, women could not vote, and it seemed normal that women should not vote. I would say that it is equally unjust to have buses in a traffic, because we are so used to this, this seems normal. But to have a bus with 80 passengers in traffic is lack of democracy. If all citizens are equal, clearly a bus with 100 passengers has a right to 100 times more road space than a car with one. So clearly, but this is not just democracy, it's technology. A committee of 12-year-old children will find out in 20 minutes that the most efficient way to use a scarce road space is with exclusive lanes for buses. Underground subways cost more than 100 million per kilometer, more than 20 times what a high-quality BRT will talk about. But even with a lot of subways, you need buses. London moves more than 1 million more people by bus than by rail. So it is too costly to reach all the periphery with rail. It's very difficult to go there with rail. It's extremely expensive. So, for example, Guangzhou's BRT moves more passengers our direction than all subways in China, except for Beijing line number two. And this costs a 20th. A BRT line moves up to 40 times more people than a car lane. 40 times more people. Well, let's go quickly, but Mexico City, giant cities are making more BRT. Enormous cities, such as Rio and Sao Paulo, have metros and are building hundreds of kilometers of BRT. This bridge that is being built for the World Cup next year in Rio is only for buses, not for cars. This bridge that is being built in Rio, there. So beyond cost, buses have advantages. Why put, people, why put public transport users underground? Are we going to put public transport users on the ground so we leave the surface to car users, that they have natural sunlight views of the city? That's not, I mean, even if you have subways, and subways are wonderful, we should give public transport users the possibility to go in the surface and have natural sunlight, enjoy the views of the city. Let's, it's better to be above ground with the natural light. And many cities are doing these BRTs, like in Brisbane, or even Paris, with such a fantastic metro system, is doing more and more BRT ex ex lines exclusively for buses and prepaid stations. 
This is also a picture of democracy in a city like Bogota, our system we call Transmilenio because buses, we have to make them a little sexier, it's a matter of marketing. When expensive cars are stuck in traffic and buses go very quickly next to them, it's a picture of democracy at work. It shows that it's true that public good prevails over private interest. And even if you have a subway, that would be useful. Bogotá Transmilenio moves up to 47,000 passengers hour direction, which is more than almost every subway in the world. And it could move more if it was made some reforms. Moscow has very large roads where BRT could be implemented very easily. Very large roads which are very inefficiently used by cars. A BRT can also be implemented in many Moscow radial routes where there is no train or subway at a very low cost. Moscow has giant roads for bigger sidewalks and for exclusive lanes for buses. Let's, I'm going to finish in two seconds, but buses have some advantages. BRT, for example, if you, if you have to change lines in a subway, you have to get out and walk a couple of blocks and wait for the next train. With buses, the, BRT, the buses can change lines without people having to get out. And there are other advantages, but we don't have time to go into them. So you can have express lines so that with an additional line at the station, buses can be expressed and only stop every 10 stations. By the way, these systems work just like a subway. People pay when they enter the station, and when a bus arrives, you can get 60 people out of the bus and 60 people into the bus in seconds. Uh, I am going to go to finish because it's too quickly, but any new road should have BRT lines. The buses will be very sophisticated technologically very soon. The technology is already available to have driverless buses. In 20 years, buses will have no drivers. And they also will be able to have more sophisticated fuels. So, but the issue is political. If a road is very narrow, when we were building our BRT in Bogota, they told us this road is very narrow, so we cannot put the BRT there. So we said, you are right. The road is very narrow, but since we are in a democracy, what you cannot put there is cars. So even in the extreme case where you have to choose between one or the other, I think democratically and technically it's more efficient to use a very narrow road with buses. Of course, normally this is not. I would say the new areas that I hear Moscow is developing, I would propose some different system. If we plan from the start to save hundreds of kilometers of bus-only roads and greenways with busways in the new areas where Moscow is growing, this would be very low cost, very simple mass transit system that would be very easy and cheap to implement. I would just finish saying that in terms of transport, and in, in some, Moscow is, Moscow is an extremely rich and advanced city, but in, in some ways, it's a little bit like Bogota or Mexico. And we should remember that in terms of transport, an advanced city is not one where even the poor use cars, but rather one where even the wealthy use public transport and bicycles. Thank you. Enrique, спасибо большое. Uh, thank you, Enrique. Uh, what I uh, like that, that the priority from the international experience that support the public transportation, uh, uh, traffic, uh, food traffic are good examples. Uh, and so the priority should go to public transport rather than to private cars. And uh, so this is actually echoes uh, 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 what uh, uh, what uh, we were talking about uh, from the viewpoint of the uh, development of Moscow transportation. So Tonko Sankovic. Don Kostankovic will give us an idea from, uh, he will look at it uh, with business eyes. Uh, uh, so what uh, additional wealth, what additional benefits we can uh, we can provide to the people if the complex development of the territory is done properly uh, based on the comfort centricity uh, of the uh, citizens. Uh, so the company uh, Mashtab is actively developing a new territory, participating in development of new. In 2013, uh, our company uh, uh, so that's uh, uh, so that got uh, 300 hectares, and uh, we offered it to the city. And uh, so we suggested that we develop uh, so then land use plan uh, of parts uh, of the territories of Moscow, using the best international consultants, international experience. 
uh, and uh, the initiative uh, was uh, uh, accepted by the city and gen uh, to, to, gen uh, to, together with the, the master plan of Moscow's development and uh, and the international team we developed an, uh, a tentative uh, a plan of land use and uh, one of the ideas uh, some of the ideas and the principles of this plan uh, became the foundation uh, for the territorial for the territorial development uh, 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 system that is developed uh, uh, has been developed by the uh, uh, the institute of the master plan of moscow's development uh, so these are the red spots uh, in the territories of the new moscow uh, so they are both for the city and for us uh, uh, they are strategically important uh, because they uh, fall into the zone of uh, the uh, of the uh, so first uh, first term uh, development and uh, so they will help uh, address many uh, transportation problems, uh, top priority uh, development areas. Uh, that's on this slide, you can see our uh, 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 proposals. Um, uh, so we think that the territory of New Moscow need to be developed uh, uh, in a polycentric way. So, so the city should look like a polycentric, polycentrically. So it's a multifunctional center uh, within uh, the uh, these uh, red spots, uh, which are the residential districts. Uh, so then uh, uh, different jobs. Uh, uh, so then uh, uh, food traffic uh, to uh, the social infrastructure, uh, to uh, uh, to the places where people work. Uh, so then the, the, then the then the urban environment uh, with uh, so open open areas. Uh, so in uh, uh, food traffic, uh, uh, easy accessibility, uh, short walks, uh, and the system of public transportation with the versatile uh, types. Of uh, of uh, transportation available. Uh, this slide um, uh, displays uh, our view uh, because we think that the administrative business center uh, with uh, its uh, and uh, so then the educational, medical, administrative cluster uh, should be the kernel, the pivot of the new Moscow and uh, should be the central uh, place of the new Moscow development. The typology of uh, uh, development that we uh, propose and uh, uh, is uh, the uh, so then uh, this is the uh, a quarter by quarter development. Uh, 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 so that will allow us to make a dense uh, uh, road uh, matrix uh, that in its turn will uh, will guarantee the absence of traffic jams, and it will be highly available for food traffic for food traffic and for public transport and uh, will and will uh, provide uh, the uh, easy accessibility uh, by foot uh, uh, to parks uh, entertainment areas uh, uh, and uh, work and uh, so we uh, provide this is we want to develop this this housing developments uh, at the outskirts and then uh, uh, a few stored buildings uh, so which with easy access to the natural resources and the environment. Uh, so the density that uh, uh, we can uh, guarantee by this way of housing development, uh, 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 even if there are only a few stories, so nine stories, uh, 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 so that will guarantee the required density of the population that uh, uh, later may uh, help mm, uh, the uh, may, may justify uh, the uh, the the existence uh, uh, the existing infrastructure that will have been built uh, transportation and then certainly the infrastructure uh, so and then uh, uh, employment uh, employment uh, uh, so we'll certainly be, we could, uh, be business parks office centers logistics centers uh, and other multifunctional centers and uh, social sites uh, social assets etc and then sports uh, commercial uh, activities um, as well and so on the on the ground floors uh, which are not for living and uh, so are only for commercial uh, or can become uh, so the the shop uh, area uh, retail areas as well uh, here uh, you can see the natural resources uh, 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 of new moscow uh, so moscow is uh, rich in greenery and water uh, uh, resources. So we plan to make use of uh, these uh, natural available resources uh, uh, of the regions and micro districts uh, uh, for uh, uh, so to, to create city parks. Uh, uh, so that other areas uh, where people. Uh, so then uh, rejuvenation of uh, water reserves, uh, uh, water bodies, uh, and uh, and uh, recreating, re uh, uh, forestering uh, the uh, 
the areas, uh, so bringing in uh, planting trees. So this certainly will beneficially impact uh, the environment and ecology of the area. Uh, so the most important uh, is transportation. Uh, uh, transportation is important to uh, uh, to give a chance to, to the people, uh, 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 so to make a decision to live in the new Moscow and uh, to uh, find employment there. And that's because by, by themselves they will never go there. You have just to give them this possibility of easy transportation, but otherwise they won't go. And uh, the public transportation is a key uh, 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 transportation method uh, that can uh, uh, provide an opportunity to quickly move from A to B and uh, avoid traffic jams. And uh, so you see some uh, suggestions uh, uh, concerning the way uh, the public transportation system may be organized, uh, metro, then the road system, uh, the surface transport, uh, so which, which provides uh, for uh, what kind of uh, uh, streetcars, bicycles, uh, and, uh, and then traffic, uh, food traffic zones as well. Uh, we would like to draw attention to the following things. So within the framework of uh, uh, the land use uh, program, uh, so we uh, we debated a lot with the Institute of the, the Master Plan and our consultants with the United States and uh, Europe. And uh, so they kept repeating uh, uh, um, that then the, the main principle uh, in the creation of the good transportation system is the highway, highway, and highway is good but outside the city, outside the uh, housing development. Because in the housing development area, uh, so there should be boulevards, uh, roads, uh, uh, then a developed uh, uh, road system plus the public transportation, but no highways and lots of pedestrian zones, uh, uh, food traffic zones. So th th there have been some uh, our proposals, uh, and uh, I think it will come out uh, with those proposals in a, in a, in a, uh, uh, in a greater d detailed way. And uh, so when we'll, uh, so then the master plans of the development uh, of uh, the uh, land use and the planning of the territories, I will, so I think that the Institute of Master Plan will consider a possibility of, uh, of, of, of dividing, as uh, uh, Kalushska uh, uh, said, dividing into, into smaller streets, a number of Kalushska highways uh, that, that go through the uh, housing development um, and, uh, and uh, to, to break it into smaller streets. Uh, and uh, maybe to, uh, to to build a number of tunnels or uh, or, or kind of a depressed uh, 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 um, uh, 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 roads uh, that go uh, below the uh, surface level and uh, uh, so you can see this is the connection uh, of two uh, districts uh, uh, and uh, we can see that in the middle uh, uh, so there's a there's a good option of uh, having this road that does not divide uh, these two housing developments but unites it connects it and so by public transportation by cars and by food traffic all this amalgamates and puts uh, them synergetically together so the key uh, 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 the, the key uh, of the successful implementation of the project uh, so then uh, developers and the cities need to cooperate because without this it's doomed uh, to to, uh, to to failure and uh, uh, so we need to harmonize uh, the housing development uh, uh, and uh, housing and uh, the transportation infrastructure, uh, then uh, the engineering, uh, uh, so under, under underground communications plus the uh, the commercial property uh, construction. So and if uh, the city allows uh, the developers to build uh, real estate without infrastructure, then the problems will be only aggravated and will never be addressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we need to find common ground uh, and uh, and uh, to harmonize our efforts. So the balance uh, between jobs and uh, living uh, area uh, should it's a very challenging task uh, uh, because we always keep uh, uh, hearing uh, that uh, as the number we need to increase the number of jobs in new territories, and uh, it should go hand in hand. Uh, and uh, so we need just to create a sort of the, the movement, traffic movement from uh, from uh, the uh, from the region to, to, to the city. But if we have lots of jobs, it doesn't fall that people will come and work there, because uh, we need to create these jobs, uh, uh, create these jobs. But then to fill them in, uh, we need to economically uh, interest the people to come and work there. Then the density of the housing construction that will. 
that would guarantee uh, the, the uh, make logical and make payable uh, 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 the investment in this area. We fully realize that there should be certain density, otherwise it makes no sense to pay, uh, to invest. And uh, that is why, uh, so then creation of low density housing uh, does not justify itself in the future because there will be, uh, uh, there will be no uh, proper load for the public transportation. Uh, uh, it will be underutilized in public transportation. And uh, socially, it will be den not dense enough and it will not be profitable anyway because uh, I think that those are the key issues to concentrate on the issues of what, what the critical mass should be uh, to make it profitable. And we keep discussing it at, uh, at uh, the, uh, and uh, I hope that this projects will be implemented successfully. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tonko, thank you very much. Very important com uh, uh, concept of a comprehensive development of a territory. In conclusion, I would like to give the floor to Jonathan uh, Watson. So he will uh, give us the benefit of his international experience, uh, how this comprehensive uh, experience uh, in the development of this territory may, may create additional value. May five, seven minutes if you can. So for questions to have time. Thank you, Daria. I promise to keep to my time. We, uh, I will present a few charts on uh, our findings from some recent research on transit-oriented development. This, we think, is important because today we've been talking about transit, but actually the real source of a city's value is its access. Um, so the shortest trip is the trip you don't have to take. So the best transit is the transit you don't need. We create that opportunity by giving people access to the life of the city where they live. That is what the value of transit-oriented development is. So we tried to understand how much value there is, how do you measure that value, and is it really business value as well? So, uh, what is transit-oriented development? Uh, we picked a definition. Uh, we, could, we can be flexible, but basically developments within 800 meters of a mass transit station, moderate to high density, mixed use, designed for pedestrians but does not have to exclude the automobile. So the automobile can be there, but it is not prioritized. So that, that's what we mean. We think that creates, first of all, great positive effects for the city on the economy. It reduces commuting times or eliminates them. It uh, increases the ridership of transit, which makes the transit more economically beneficial. Uh, it increases the business attractiveness, which also can create better revenues for the city through property taxes. And as importantly, it has demonstrated positive indirect social and environmental effects. Lower crime, more livable, reduced environmental impacts. Now that's all very interesting and we've seen some you know, good theoretical analysis, but I guess the innovation that we had was to develop a data set globally which would then correlate the transit-oriented development nature of a location with its actual price. This has been a problem to find this kind of data before. So we believe this is actually the first time this analysis has been done at this scale. And what we find is that typically there is in fact a very positive correlation between how transit-oriented development a location is and the premium that it can, be, it can realize. And that premium is anywhere uh, between 50 to 100% of the base price of the property. And the premium is driven mostly by tr access and the density, the greater hi and higher density, but also about it by the indirect effects of livability and safety. This also can be measured in terms of how it impacts car usage and transportation costs. What you can see on the right hand side there is that as you get more walkability, transportation costs for the average family go down. Housing costs, in fact, go up, reflecting the higher value of the property. 
So there is a different and an important conversation about who gets to live in transit oriented into, into development and how do we create an economically diverse population. But the facts seem pretty clear that people want this and when they want it, they'll pay more for it. So as far as how we did this, there are a number of characteristics and this, uh, this framework is actually taken from uh, the Institute of Transport and so we can see compact city, connected, dense, transit oriented. Uh, I won't go through all of the data but that's certainly happy to talk more. What we were able to do is to take that and then use GIS, geospatial data, and map cities. So we can literally take satellite data, look at each location, compare it to those eight different characteristics and come up with a score saying what's its TOD score. Based on those metrics, we then come up with a very TOD friendly, not so TOD friendly. And we link it back to things like, in this case, price per square meter. And here we show an example in Moscow. The average price per square meter in rubles, 240,000. Uh, and we see that there are some things, of course, that make a big difference. If you have a more expensive or a less expensive business uh, building material, then that will make it a lot more or a lot less. Uh, but importantly, as we can see here, these TOD related criteria also make a huge difference. The, how short is the commute time, how much uh, lower on-street parking, uh, higher share of walkways, higher residential densities, these things all really do make a difference uh, in the actual value of the property. So that's kind of the message. Um, I think I'll just close by noting that as was said, one of the big challenges here is to create critical mass. So to bring together the economic, transport, and social decisions so that you can have a development at scale. Usually the main reason these developments haven't happened is because there's a legacy barrier. There's a barrier in the forms of zoning, there's a barrier in the form of transport infrastructure. With a new area, we of course have much greater opportunities to rethink and to reimagine. So we'd hope that New Moscow will be a showcase uh, for transit-oriented development, which will be winning for the city, its citizens, and also for business. So thank you. Jonathan, спасибо большое. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Jonathan. And uh, this, I'd like to. Uh, 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 to turn the floor to questions. Um, uh, questions from the floor, please. <coughs> Vladimir Plotnikov, International University of Moscow, uh, Department of uh, Big Cities Management. Uh, my question is to uh, Mrs. Nigmatulina. Your institute uh, uh, develops uh, strategic plans for development of Moscow. It's obvious that the main issue of Moscow now is transportation. That's the main challenge. So you can improve it, uh, uh, and uh, uh, still, uh, so then there is still the simulacre of the transport collapse is looming, is looming not far ahead of you, and you can just push it away. But uh, the, the the collapse of the transportation system will come again. Uh, anyway, so this you uh, connected this new territory. Do you think it will help to alleviate the transportation problem, uh, if not? Or, or if yes, then how? If not, then I'll have another question. Yes, so the connection of the new territory uh, will help to address uh, the traffic problem. Uh, so one of the approaches that we uh, spoke about is the development of polycentric uh, uh, assets. And we talk about the polycentricity of, uh, so these uh, gravitation points uh, should be located not only in uh, the downtown area, but they should be certainly located in other areas as well. So that the polycentricity may help. Uh, so, but then with the help of development uh, of, uh, of this polycentricity to create additional centers of gravity. But we need to understand that the development of additional centers uh, in the territory of Moscow region is another very important uh, point. Because if you look at the structural st stability of Moscow agglomeration, it should be more or less symmetric. It cannot be only one-sided. 
because because uh, the Moscow region extremely important because if you do not our institute works very closely with Moscow region because planning a Moscow region should be concomitant with the, with the planning of Mo Moscow of the new and old Moscow otherwise it will be all biased and uh, uh, imbalanced okay so polycentric is many centers right but but there is only there is only two uh, polycentric uh, 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 my question. So the main imbalance of Moscow uh, is the imbalance between the location uh, of where people live and uh, and the Moscow, the, 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 the citizens of Moscow region and and the jobs. Uh, uh, so they they have to travel trips along, and so half of the jobs uh, of Moscow region are located in downtown Moscow. So they have the long trips they have to make. And you and uh, the proper solution would be to uh, eliminate this disbalance. So the transportation infrastructure and a number of others. So let's talk about the numbers. Uh, uh, currently, in the central part, in the downtown of Moscow, in, in approximately we have 45%, uh, as we heard the number, 45% of the jobs. And uh, only 10% uh, live here in the central part. Uh, and uh, we have in other uh, areas in Moscow approximately 90% uh, of residents who live and uh, only. And then consider the pendulum migration, this uh, kind of. Uh, and we understand that, as I told you, a million and a half uh, every day travels uh, to and from and one of the ideas around the new moscow is part of those uh, million and a half can go there to the new moscow because uh, that uh, they, they they will try to develop jobs there so the new moscow allows us uh, to create another gravity center uh, gravity zone and uh, uh, there are dis disbalance disbalances again in the historical Moscow because the people live outside uh, in the in the outskirts and the periphery but the jobs are inside the center uh, so addressing the polycentricity we consider all the industrial zones that we have which uh, have uh, uh, actually still the minimum number of jobs and the uh, development of industrial zones uh, is targeted at creating jobs not residential areas only do you think uh, a resident of Metishi will go to the ter will go to the new Moscow so that's why we need uh, to develop uh, uh, all the 360 degrees around Moscow. I told you we intend to work with the Moscow Oblast uh, to develop the symmetry. We really need to address it. It's not just the city, but the Moscow Oblast that needs to be developed. And uh, we are now working about uh, around the concept of uh, the unified uh, uh, grounds. So there are two constituent units, Moscow and the Moscow Oblast around uh, the city. So our time is running out and uh, it is very important. The topic is very important. Uh, it's not simple. Uh, so I believe we lost so much time on uh, uh, trifles. So we suggest this is a very important uh, topic that we need to. Yes, after the session, you can discuss offline. So another question, yeah, privately. I have two short questions. Uh, uh, so the independent highway uh, um, structure should be created. And uh, there was a pro proposal from some urbanist. And Moscow has now started suppressing the uh, private cars uh, traffic. What are the next steps? Uh, pay parking outside the garden ring, tax, uh, pay pay entry to the downtown. What 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 do you think is going to be done next? Let me take this question. As for the constructing of a railway backbone, yes, indeed, we are discussing. And uh, mainly we intend to build it uh, from the federal, but not exactly 
not the Moscow budget, but the federal budget. We are going to use the federal budget at this very early stage of discussion. It's too early to jump to conclusions. Um, but the project indeed is uh, being considered with the colleagues from the Transportation Ministry. From uh, As for the um, uh, restrictions, or for private cars, there is no, you know, we are not fighting them. It may sound strange, but I can tell you that the pay parking that you probably mean first, it is important for the car uh, owners. I will tell you, so a car used to park for six hours on average, but now the average uh, uh, parking time is uh, approximately an hour and a half. So the cars will still come, but especially during the peak hours, uh, the number of cars uh, should go down. That's what we achieve. More drivers can park. And uh, as for the parking, pay parking uh, outside the garden ring, we are not planning anything like that. And. Uh, the decision. Oh, you see, someone is so emotional about the <laughs> pay, pay parking and then <laughs> dropping the uh, dishes. So uh, in December, the pay parking will cover all the uh, grounds within the garden ring. Uh, and uh, we need uh, to raise the effect so that the Residents will have some special parking spaces, uh, the, the, the local uh, residents, uh, but uh, we need to work uh, uh, individually. We are not uh, going to expand the pay parking. We need to wait for the results uh, of the new, new experiments, and then we shall talk to experts and the residents uh, on the further ways to develop. Thank you for the question. Uh, question to Maxim, a very short one. The first question of interest to many Moscow hipsters at the plenary, we were telling that Moscow has become a bicycle city, a cyclist city. And uh, when do you think uh, the Moscow metro will let the bicycles in? And the second, what is the destiny of the Moscow trolley buses? I heard that you do not favor them. What's going to happen to the trolley buses? No, I, what do you think? I don't like trolley. No, I, I'm very, uh, I have very good attitude to those trolley buses. We study the routes. Uh, it's sometimes we, we uh, vote for the uh, green transport. The buses that we purchase now, they are going to approach the Euro 6 standard, the best, the uh, the green engines that we could find, we shall use them. If we get the buses that um, have even less exhaust, uh, then we shall go for them. This is a very important program. Uh, as for the trolley buses, there are routes where the trolley buses are very inefficient, clumsy, senseless, does not have any uh, benefit. So probably from there, we move the trolley buses to some routes, like in the garden ring, where it is very good, efficient, and needed. And the number of trolley buses will really increase. So, But the number will, will stay. As for the bicycle, you know probably that the bicycles are allowed. You need to remove the wheel and uh, Well, letting the bicycles into the metro in the way it is, it exists. This is not safe, simply not safe. We uh, object to jeopardize the safety of other passengers, you know. We, you know, we made all the decisions for the ground transport, and then we shall let you take it. The, uh, uh, in onto the bus or tram without any restriction, but considering the metro entryways, the uh, 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 travelators and the peak hours, technically, it is uh, very difficult and unsafe. Thank you very much. I would like to thank all the panelists and uh, continue uh, discussing offline. Thank you.